Diana Rossini now, who's going to be covering this game for ESPN's radio's coverage live in New Orleans. And she'll also be a part of ESPN's Sunday NFL Countdown 10-1. to And she joins us now here on the Boardwalk Honda Hotline as Diana Rossini is following the Eagles and the Saints. And she's here on the Sports Bash on 97.3 ESPN. Welcome, Diana. Hey, guys. I uh, love that promo, by the way. Can you do all the promos for me on all the shows I do? Because uh, I'm even sold on myself here. So thank you for that. <laughs> well, if you know a good person looking for some voice work, let them, send them my way. I'll, I'll voice the stuff for them. Um, hey, I know you were in uh, with the Eagles this week, and uh, this is a team that – it's really hitting some hard times, four and five, Diana. I saw some of your tweets earlier, and you, it seemed like, I don't know if you were surprised by the mood in this locker room, but it seemed like a team that really understands what's what their challenge is, but is also kind of excited for it. Yeah, I, that's the exact way I would put it as well. And it was interesting, too, because I asked Carson Wentz if he called as desperate. Uh, and he, he was honest. He's like, listen, I don't like to use that word. And, and we all can understand why, why he doesn't like that word because you don't want that headline. But he's well aware of what they're up against. You know, meantime, in the locker room, Chris Long, when I told him the same situation, I said, listen, is this team desperate? Carson doesn't think so. He's like, I actually disagree. We are desperate. He's like, we have to win this game. He's like, the difference is, though, if, when, you're, when you're truly desperate, sometimes you tend to do things that, you're not comfortable doing he's like and that's not what we're doing he's like we're not pressed we just know that this is pretty make or break at this point and you know the saints the, the saints are sniffing it out as well you know i spoke to some players this morning about it asking them you know you think this is a trap game for you guys because we know how red hot they are they got the longest win streak in the league right now and they're not calling it a trap game they they said if we were playing someone like the giants that, that that's that's a trap game that's a team with you know pretty much nothing to lose at this point the eagles this is a kind of game that they can break out because even chris long explained it he's like if there's a a, a team that we actually want to play at this point as crazy as it sounds it's a team like the new orleans saints because this entire season can turn itself around by being a team as good as New Orleans, as we know they're, they're easily the best team in the NFC. Well, Diana, it's interesting because when I read some of your tweets, I, my mindset was kind of like, all right, this team thrived in this underdog role. Now, a couple of weeks ago, Doug Peterson said pressure's off, almost like insinuating we want to go back to that role after he had said this is the new normal. We're going to be in this picture for a long, long time. Does it feel like this team this week – feels a little disrespected in there that people are counting them out, counting their season to be over at four and five. I didn't get that sense. And here's the thing. I spent all week in Philadelphia and I know I'm obviously listening to everything and watching the news and reading as many blogs as I can. And in terms of just the hate that the team is getting, it, it is clear here. There is, there is no doubt. And New Orleans is aware of it too. They actually mentioned that. They're like, man, that city is hard on them for a team that just won the Super Bowl. Uh, but inside the locker room, I didn't get a edge or, or a bitterness towards it. Uh, if anything, I, I felt a, a bit of calm. I think they're up for the challenge. I think they realize with the secondary, with the injuries that they have, the, the, the difficulty that they're going to have slowing Drew Brees as well as that run game down. I do believe that they think that this is a team that, that they can catch right now just on the uh, on the mental side of it, because we've seen this before. We see teams riding high like this, and then boom, they're stopped right in the middle of it because they're not they're they're believing their hype too much. And and I can tell you, down in New Orleans, they're trying to do everything they can to not buy into this hype because they know they can get caught. And you know, w one of the funny things that's going on that we were talking about today with some New Orleans people was, you know, last year they were so devastated after that Vikings game that Sean Payton continued watching film after that loss on the Eagles, like, as if he was going to the NFC Championship game. <laughs> um, you know, he may, need a, he may need a hobby, but uh, <laughs> so this team's been sort of preparing since then uh, in terms of just getting this team in. And, and you know, if, if it comes down to it, do, do I think the Eagles are going to win? I don't. Do I think they have a shot? If they can keep in this game until the fourth quarter, I think that's their only way to win. Well, and, and you know, uh, the interesting part about that uh, whole situation is, w wasn't it one of the Saints players that came out and said, if we would have won that game, we would have gone to Philly and beat them? Do they look at this game as kind of that statement that we would have beaten you in the in the NFC Championship game? Oh, they're coming in with an underdog mentality, which is funny because 
they're on this eight game win streak and they are rolling. I was with them with the Bengals and, you know, I was actually talking to some Eagles players about this. I said, you know, when you're around the Saints, they've got this mojo. They got this perfect balance of confidence that reminds me of the Eagles from last season. And, you know, when you talk to, to the Philly guys about it, they, they all kind of give you the same facial expression of like, I know exactly what you're talking about because we were there. You know, and listen, every time I, I cover the Eagles, I have to bring up the Super Bowl hangover. And it's not to have that lazy narrative, but because I know it's true. I've covered the Patriots for years. And that's the one thing that they always say to me is don't overstate a Super Bowl hangover because it is hard. Because sometimes it's not about focusing on, you know, it's easy to focus on the mistakes after failures. But it's even hard to focus on what you need to change after success. And so there's obviously issues here, but when you're riding off so much love like they are, being told they're so great, sometimes you miss out on those little details on those things. And, and I do feel that with this team. As much as I don't want to say it, I will definitely look back on this season if they don't turn around and be like, well, they definitely were slapped in the face that Super Bowl hangover. Well, I know Jason Kelsey the other day kind of came out and said we're not having the same accountability, you know, as last season. And, Diana, so many this, – this whole year has been – this is different from last year. They did this. It seems that every sentence starts, well, last year they did this. That's got to be tough. And then, Kelsey, you know, everyone's trying to find a place to put their finger on what the problem is. Kelsey maybe shed the light and said, we're just not being held accountable. And that's because Brent Selleck, Tory Smith, these are all veteran players that sometimes the fans take for granted who don't have a big numerical impact. But they do have a big impact, it seems like. Oh, no, for sure. And and I can see how irritating that must be for them. Because here's the thing. We're all saying it of, you know, you guys aren't like you were last year. You think these guys don't know that? They're <laughs> right. well aware. They they know it. Because when you talk to them about it, they, they may not give you that quote, but you can read so much in facial expressions and body language. And they have to deal with the media every single day asking the same thing of what's different, what's wrong, what. You know, I asked a, a few guys on defense, you know, should Jim Schwartz be getting as much um, criticism as he is, because last year he was a hero. And, you know, a lot of the feeling I'm getting from the defense specifically is, listen, we weren't even that great on defense last year. So to have this thought that, like, we've really fallen off, the biggest difference, and this this was collective from every defender I talked to this week in the locker room, takeaways. That's going to be the difference. If they can get a few takeaways early on in this game, they, they got a shot against Drew Brees and, the, and, and company. That should be fun. I know uh, it should be a raucous crowd down in New Orleans. A lot of Eagle fans making the trip. Diana Rossini will be there on the sideline for ESPN Radio's coverage of Eagles and Saints. That's a 4 o'clock start. And, of course, you can see her on the ESPN Sunday NFL Countdown Show, 10-1, to 1, uh, checking in on Eagles, Saints. The Eagles season almost on the line. The Saints playing for possible the number one seed in the NFC. Diana, by the way, before you go, we have a message from one of our previous guests who wanted to uh, have you hear this message. All right, take a listen. So Diana Rossini, this is what I love about her. Young person, just figuring things out at ESPN, works her tail off, does, does a great job of making sure she visits Philadelphia during the week, even though she doesn't have any specific TV duties, shows her face in the locker room, gets notes from players, Absolutely phenomenal job by Diana Rossini doing her proper prior preparation so she'll have a, pre a fantastic performance on Sunday, and I know she will. That's our friend Sal Pal. He wanted to get that message to you. He is unbelievable. Here's the thing. When I show my face in, in Philly, I always, you know, I get excited because I don't really get to cover the Eagles much because this is the Sal Pal territory. <laughs> um, I wish I could say that people in this city are excited to see a change of face. That's not the case. People come up to me, people in Cavs, at pizzerias, they all say the same thing. Where's Sal Pal? Where's Sal Pal? <laughs> so uh, any, anything, uh, any big compliment coming from Sal uh, means a lot to me. So thanks for sharing that with me. Absolutely. Uh, he does our show every Friday. It was great to have you on when I saw you were doing the sidelines. I figured that uh, we had to get you. Uh, I saw your tweets during the week. And uh, as he said, you're working hard doing the stuff and get the pulse of what's going on. There's a big Eagle Saints game. And uh, we appreciate no, you jumping on board the Boardwalk Honda Hotline. Thanks so much. Thanks, guys.